Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. By popular demand, let's look at the complete audio effects breakdown. All right, there are two ways to apply audio effects. You can apply them on a clip-by-clip -clip basis, or you can apply them in the audio track mixer. The big difference with the audio track mixer is they're in categories. They're easier to find. They're the exact same thing. I've got lots of tutorials on working with audio, but let's just go through. I've got some examples of, of dialogue and music and, and singing and things like that uh, so that we can see what these effects do. Are you ready? Let's dig in. Now, I do want to mention that the really good effects that we're going to be looking at, well, they're already controlled in the Essential Sound panel. It is so much easier to apply them, to edit them, to update them. That's really the first place you should go. All right, so as I mentioned, in the effects, in the audio effects, you'll see a giant list down there of all of these effects. They're also in the audio track mixer. If you twirl this down, you can see they're divided into categories. I created my own workspace. I called it Collins Audio just to make finding things a little bit easier. Um, so now I have a very large uh, audio track mixer and that's where I'm going to apply them. So the first thing we're gonna work on is some dialogue in track one. So I'll twirl this down and in the top section, pick effects. So we'll go to the first one, which is amplify. Whenever you apply an effect, you just see the name of the effect and one of the controls. You can pick other controls here or you can double click on it. If an effect has a, a bigger interface, then you can open it up here. This one really doesn't have much. There are a few presets in here to, to, um, to set the amplification, but basically this is very simple. It's amplifying the signal. So if you wanted to boost it by six dBs. The farmhouse on sixth line across from the turn that down. Quarry. Bill supervised blasting at mines. That's it. You can set that any way you want. It's just a simple amplification. The amplify effect is what's used in the new auto ducking feature in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Let's keep going. Channel volume. If we click on a, on a clip and you look in the effects control panel, you'll see volume. If we add channel volume to the track, it's basically the same thing. Now, you'll notice that I can't drag it. If I try to drag it to these mono files, I can't. And that's because certain effects have restrictions and can be only be uh, used on certain tracks. So this is a stereo track, so I can drag channel volume up to there, but it's like I said, it's exactly the same as the channel volume that's already inside each clip in the effects controls. So that is channel volume. A de-esser, we'll apply that, double click on it, and open this up. And we can listen to this. Joyce and Bill Hill. And there are some presets in here for female, male voices, a de esser or a de escher. Live in a century stone farmhouse on sixth line across from the proposed quarry. And we can just listen to Bill the sibilance. Blasting mines around the world for his whole life. So it's a little bit hard to hear in here. The sibilance isn't that bad, but sometimes some people, when they're speaking, everything is just whistling and you can take out the, either the eshing or the essing. So that's, and you know what? There are several effects that have de-essing in them. This is just one that has a dedicated effect. All right, let's keep going. Dynamics, don't use this one, it's old. It's not that good. It does have some presets in here for um, compressing, limiting, medium compression, but there's much better versions than this. And knows this area. 
and knows there are no guarantees in blasting. So let's try my favorite, which is Dynamics Processing. Now I like this one, and I use this preset, minus soft limit minus 12 dB. And in the settings, this is the number here, the output gain that really makes a difference. You'll hear a huge difference with this. As you can see, flashing green lights come in a wide variety and can be mounted in or on many different types of vehicles. That's all. Whether using a car, That's truck, off. or a motorcycle, these dedicated men and women are... I apply that to every single one of my tracks. I have a boom microphone just out of view here, and this is being recorded directly to the Blackmagic camera. When I get this in Premiere Pro, I drop on... Uh, Era N for, for noise effects. I've got lots of, of uh, fans going on. And then I put the Dynamics processor on it. This is the go-to one for anything where you need some more punch. Um, it was introduced, I think, uh, in 20, end of 2017. So it's in all the newest versions of Premiere Pro. It came from Audition. All the good effects came from Adobe Audition. So that's a really good one to use. And you can use it for anything. A hard limiter, this is another kind of compression. It's a limiter that will do just that. It's going to limit the amount of output. So I could limit this to minus 6 dB. Well, your local fire department can and will be responding from. If we go look at this amplitude and compression, all of these are doing some form of amplification and or compression or limiting of the, of the overall setting. This is an incredibly deep and complex subject. I wouldn't even begin to, to be classed as anyone who knows this at an expert level. I know some default settings that I use, but compression is a very difficult thing to hear. You really have to push compression to hear it, and usually if you push it that far, uh, then you're causing problems. Really good audio engineers can hear the tiniest bit of compression. That's not me. Now there's another one in here, the multiband compressor. This is the one I used to use before I use the um, Dynamics Processing. And it has a bunch of presets in here, including killing the harshness and internet delivery. Broadcast is the default, and you'll hear a big difference. These firefighters live and work in your community. I'll turn it off. And are willing at the sound of a beep or two to respond and help save lives and property. These are cool. You can actually solo the different frequencies. So I'll take this back and... Lights so come in a wide variety and can be mounted in or on many different types of vehicles. Whether using a car, truck... And you can combine them. These dedicated men and women of your local... This is basically four compressors in one, and you can turn on a brick wall limiter here, and then you've got an overall output gain. Really powerful, but like I said, dynamics processing, that's what I'm using these days. Then there's a single band compressor, which is just that. Very simple compressor. And again, there's some presets. A lot of them look the same, like there's a brick wall limiter, blissful base. These firefighters live and work in your community. And, and you can set the, the threshold, how much compression, how fast it's happening, how fast it's releasing, and then overall Better. gain. And are willing at the sound of a beep or two to respond and help save lives and property, possibly even your own. So that's a single band compressor. And then there's a tube modeled compressor. Again, this has a bunch of very similar presets and a couple of simple controls. Just. Joyce and Bill Hill live in a. Joyce and Bill Hill. Again, overall threshold. Stone farmhouse on six so it's, across from the it's 
a little bit harder to uh, to get to that. So those are the uh, compressions, dynamics, processing, trust me, that's the one you want to do. Um, okay, now let's look at the next category, which is delay and echo. And for this, uh, I'm going to go to a track here where I just started yapping. Hello. So let's put that on here. Let's do the analog delay. Double click on that. And again, there's a bunch of defaults in here. Let's do Canyon Echoes. Hello, 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 hello. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. And let's try Jelly Phone. Hello. hello. And there's even a robot voice. Hello. Hello. It's a typical analog delay, and this one has emulations of tape, tape and tube, and straight analog. You can set how much of the dry signal or how much is just the wet signal. Hey. Oh. How much is the delay? How many feedback? How many times does it feed back? Hello. 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 Okay. So obviously that's the analog delay. <clears throat> then there's a straight delay with not a lot of settings in it. Basically feedback delay and the overall mix. It's, it's doing a lot of the same things. Hey. Hey. And... Then there's a multi-tap delay. Let me go over to this track. Maybe something you're familiar with, uh, with delay. Let me go back to the analog delay and add the delay to this guitar. I'll turn it off. The famous U2 Edge guitar sound. That's 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 a very typical easy delay. You're dropping on there and it's timed with the music. Okay, we'll come back to that in a, in a quick moment. All right, let's go back to filters and EQ. So for this, let's go. Go back to our dialog and filter EQ. <clears throat> so the band pass the band pass restricts everything that isn't in this frequency. So whatever you're dialing this frequency up. So if I dial this to something like 500. Joyce and Bill Hill live in a century stone farmhouse. And I can set the Q value on fixed line across from the proposed quarry. Bill supervised blasting at mine so it's kind of hard to, to visualize what's going on in here, but in the frequencies, let me, let me just open up the parametric EQ for you. We'll get to the, what the parametric EQ does in a second, but just so you understand what frequencies are. The proposed quarry. So watch when I turn that on and off. Bill supervised blasting at mine around the world for his whole life. So what we're looking at is a frequency display from the lowest sounds to the highest sounds, and then how loud those sounds are. By turning the bandpass on and off, which I have before the EQ, you can see how much it's limiting. You can 
visually see the waves that are being passed in. So we've restricted it to only the higher waves, so it sounds very tinny. Band pass, you know what? I wouldn't use it. I'd use the parametric EQ. Okay, let's go back to our EQ. And there's overall bass. So if you wanted bass, then you could just boost the bass. As you can see, flashing green lights come in a wide variety and can be mounted in or on many different types of vehicles, whether using a car, truck, or... So it's just a simple bass boost. You can do all the same in the parametric EQ. The FFT filter, Fast Fourier Transform. This is another kind of filter that allows you to look at certain frequencies. Um, there are, there's another DSer in here, and there's the Kill the Mic Rumble. You can see it removes the, the bottom end. These dedicated men and women local fire department can and will be up your loading from... And the DSer, it's going to dip this down in this area here. Any moment in their daily lives. Firefighters live and work in your... These fight and are willing at the sound of a beep or two your community spawned. Uh, so this is really used for uh, carving out different frequencies and you can set whether it's linear or logarithmic. So it's going to encompass more uh, of the actual spectrum beyond what human hearing is. You can turn the spline curves on and off. It's definitely a useful filter, but um, it, it, it requires a little bit of understanding. I, I, honestly, I would never use it again. Parametric EQ has got me covered. Then there's a 10, 20, and 30 band graphic EQ. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll just show you the 30 band. And this is going to give you that giant 30 band EQ that you can raise and lower different uh, levels. So this is for someone who doesn't like the parametric EQ. You could use this one to fine tune the vocals. Joyce and Bill Hill live in a century stone farmhouse on sixth line across from the proposed quarry. Bill supervised blasting at mines around the world for his- And there are a bunch of presets in here where here, here's something, increase the bass and you'll see the bass comes up a little bit. This is destination home theater. So it's giving a, a certain pattern for that. Boosts, cuts, different musical settings. Um, and then take the gong out of symbols. So some of these settings were created by engineers that, that have a musical background. So when, anytime you hear a reference to an instrument um, or, or uh, something like that, then don't use it for, for dialogue or, or anything like that. That's specifically for symbols that you're trying to remove the gonginess sound out of them. All right, so those are the graphic EQs. Then there's high pass and low pass filters, and they're doing just what I said. You know, if, if we open up the parametric EQ again, so I'll turn the, the uh, I'll bring the parametric EQ up and then just change this value. So you'll see the frequency showing up. These dedicated men and women of your local fire department. So high pass is letting the high stuff pass. The low pass is, guess what? From any moment. Letting the low pass lives. stuff. These firefighters live and work in your community. Again, I'd use the parametric EQ for that. There's a notch filter. The notch filter does just that. It notches things out. So there are different uh, frequencies in here. There's a uh, 50 hertz and harmonics. Removal, get rid of, this is. And are willing at the sound of a beep or two to reset. So this is actually adding different um, fundamentals and harmonics to the existing audio. I don't, I don't know why you would use this, but it's, it's the musical notes A and E while they're talking. Uh, and this is completely user definable. So you could drag these around in here any way you want. And change these. 
So it's up to you on how you want to change them. Now, one thing I do want to show you is we can't change Q values on here. They're, they're all narrow, um, small or narrow. And I'll show you the parametric EQ, um, why that's so much better. Okay, so now let's look at the parametric EQ. Turn that guy off. All right, so I'll turn this off and just work with the middle one. You can see we've got a high pass and a low pass already built into the parametric EQ and some default presets in here, including something called the old time radio. So if you wanted to make something sound like an old time radio, you can do that. Joyce and Bill Hill. I'll there turn that off. Stone farmhouse on sixth line. But let's go back to the default. So here's what I was talking about with, with the Q value. So this is going to boost that frequency. And that frequency you can see right here. You can sweep that frequency. But here's a real important one. That's the Q value or the width. Sometimes you're carving out a specific frequency that you either want to accentuate, you want to make it louder, or you want to reduce it. If you can fine tune that exact frequency, the width or the cue, it's better off. If you've got a hum or a buzz or something uh, and you're removing it, you're not removing the good frequency. So the parametric EQ rocks on, man. You want that for sure. There's a scientific filter. And this one is used for forensics purposes. And you'll see in here 60, 60 hertz hum notch filter. So it's removing the, the, uh, the, the uh, hum or cut the hiss above 10K, leave the bass uh, strictly 1K. So this is only leaving 1K in there. So it's got some good uses for forensics type work. Um, you wouldn't use it for, for regular audio work in your projects though. Then there's a simple notch filter. And this one doesn't have controls other than the center and the cue and the notch that you're Bro, accentuating. Whole life. And knows this area. So you've heard the term notch several times, lots of these uh, effects have the ability to notch something out. This is just yet one more in there. You don't have to use all of these and don't think they're all there because they're, they're good. They just, they're there because they've been there for a long time. So most of these I would never ever use. Okay, let's keep going. Then there's a simple parametric EQ. And this one, again, just has a center Q and a boost, that's it. Not very useful. And then an overall treble control. So just like you'd think. And knows there are no guarantees in blasting. So you're changing the overall treble. As you can see, flashing green lights. But the parametric EQ is what you would use for that. Okay, so that's everything in the filter and EQ. Then we've got chorus and flange, flanger and phaser. Um, I'll go back over to the um, guitar and we'll apply those. There's a chorus and flanger. These are very musical. You wouldn't really use these at all for any voice work. All right, let's Look at these presets. There's heavy chorus, metallic, mild tension, smooth chorus, or a flanger. And you could apply these to anything, but uh, you know, you would normally apply these for musical effects or sound design if you wanted to create this kind of an effect. There is the um, the flanger, and there's Lots of settings in here. Here's Hell's Chorus. 
Let me put it on the guitar. And then there's another modulation, which is the phaser, which um, has a few more settings in it. But I think you get the basic idea. Okay, so that's the modulation. You're not going to use anything in there. Uh, let's go to noise reduction. Um, okay, so I'll put this back on the voice track. So there's three in here. There's adaptive noise reduction, and I've got a whole tutorial um, on using the adaptive noise. But basically, it's going to take the noise out of that signal. As you can see, flashing green lights turn it off. A wide variety and can be mounted in or on many different types of vehicles. Whether the the only issue with adaptive noise is it can't start at the beginning of a clip. It will always leave the noise and then kick in. Yeah, I have a tutorial on this, and I've got another one on Era A and sorry, Era N, which is a uh, uh, Akisonos plugin that I use on all of my shows. So that's adaptive noise. It's good, but um, you it won't apply it to the beginning. There's an automatic click remover. So for this one, we're going to use, put this on the music back here. So I've got a, a track with some clicks in it. So let's apply that We're on this effect here. Automatic click remover. And when we play that, you'll hear no more clicks and pops. Turn it off. It's it on. And there are some defaults in here for heavy, light, and medium reduction. The hissing you hear in there is noise, not cl clicks and pops. So this click remover is just looking for clicks. So we, it, even if there were mechanical clicks, like engaging and disengaging a microphone, or even uh, tapping the camera in and hitting the microphone, you could use it for that. So that's the automatic click remover. Absolutely essential, for sure. Okay. There's a D-hummer. So let's put the D-hummer on our vocal track. And for that, I'm going to go to here and choose 60 hertz. And I've got a, a track right here with some hum in it. So I'm going to turn the effect off and play it first. I think my first foray into technology is, is a young kid. Uh, playing with stereos and uh... so let's let's turn the Q value up and let's turn the effect on. So I'll play it and turn this effect on and off. I think my first foray into technology is turn it off. Kid, uh, playing with stereos and uh, connecting things to TV, uh, whether it was video. So I chose 60 cycles, and in, in Europe, it would be 50 cycles. This is a very typical kind of grounding hum that occurs when there's a ground loop in the way that things are plugged into a room. And uh, because you can find that one frequency and pull it out, the rest of the frequencies are left clean. D hummer, absolutely perfect. And you could use it for anything other than that, but it's really good for pulling out that 50, 60 cycle hum. All right, so that's everything in noise reduction. Now we've got reverb. So for this one, I'm going to put this on the voice track here. So there's three kinds of reverb. Uh, the surround sound reverb, I'll, I'll show it to you. I don't have surround sound available, but 
if you did, then you would be able to affect the surround sound reverb for all uh, six channels. So you can choose some of these presets. Hey, oh. So that's the surround sound reverb. Let's go to the studio reverb. And let's grab a great hall. Hello. Hello. Hey. Oh. And of course, you can change uh, lots of things in here, like uh, how much of the early reflections, how wide that is, uh, what's the overall output level. It's, it's a pretty good reverb. And then we also have the convolution reverb. And we've got some choices in here, some quite interesting ones in here, like a smoky bar and under the bridge. Uh, but I'm just going to, to leave it on the default and go to a great hall here and make sure my room size is up. And I've got uh, a file here from uh, Abdul Samad uh, in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Hey, how's it going, Abdul? Uh, where he, he uh, we've been working on this, this great tutorial, it, it's coming, where he sent this one file of him singing uh, Quranic recitation, and I wanted to uh, add reverb to it. I'll turn it off. So those are the reverbs. They can uh, definitely be used for musical uh, capabilities, for sound design, for uh, special effects kinds of things where you try to open that, uh, uh, that room up. You want to create that kind of a sound. Then there's a bunch of special ones in here. Let's go into the guitar one. So there's overall distortion, um, which is just that. It's adding distortion to a track. And you could do this to a vocal track. It doesn't have to be a guitar track. But you can add uh, infinite distortion. Whoa, that's uh, pretty loud. So not only is it adding distortion, it's boosting the volume quite a bit. Now, the other one that's in here is fill left with right, fill right with left. And for that, I'm gonna go to an audio file that I have, a dialogue file that I have a problem with. So with this file here, Listen to it. Joyce and Bill Hill live in a century stone farmhouse. Oh, so I've got house on. I've got the D Hummer on there, which is affecting that. Let me turn that off. Sixth line across from the proposed quarry. Bill supervised blasting at mines. And what with the problem we've got here is it's a stereo file, but the audio was only recorded on one side. This is a really typical problem. And you want to actually add the, the audio from one side to another. So there are effects for that. Fill left with right, fill right with left. This would be an example of, of where I wouldn't apply this through a track at all. So I would go back to my effects and drag it on. So the left, you can see right here, L, the left is full, the right is empty. So fill right with the left one. I'll drag that on. You won't see anything in here, but you'll, you'll definitely hear it. Joyce and Bill Hill live in a century stone farmhouse. So it's, it gives the impression of a mono track. It's a very quick fix to this. 
it, it sounds mono because the exact same signal is now occurring on the left and right side instead of having nothing on the right hand side. So very useful, fill left with right, fill right with left. If you have a really old version of Premiere Pro, this is just called fill left, fill right, and you have to guess what it means. They actually named with right, with left, uh, because people had problems with it. Okay, in the special category is the guitar suite. And this is a, uh, a collection of guitar type effects with appropriate names like big and dumb, driven box, and this drum suite actually does sound good. So if we put the analog delay on the next part and put that to 355 and then put a little bit of reverb, now that guitar part sounds like this. If we turn those effects off, turn them all back on. So there you go. We're combining all those effects together to get the edge sound. Those were, that's the guitar suite. Invert, that you can't see it. This in, inverts the phase. Uh, understanding phase is beyond this, but every single signal has a phase. And when you have one phase, uh, so I'll, I'll use hand puppets here. So this is a phase of a sound wave. And if you have another sound wave the opposite way, um, then it, it, it will cancel it out. Doesn't make it silent, but it makes it sound very thin. If you've ever plugged in speakers incorrectly and you've reversed the wires and you turn speakers up and they just don't sound beefy enough, that's because the phase is wrong and you've got to switch that. So what this does is it inverts the phase of that signal. Um, you have to have something that's out of phase to be able to hear a difference when you invert the signal. I don't have anything for that. Loudness radar, let's put that on the master. You'll see it start to measure that audio. So the loudness radar, the understanding behind that is uh, it's, it doesn't change the sound. It doesn't tell you where you've where you've gone above or, or below a certain threshold, but there are certain restrictions in modern broadcast uh, television where you can't have, you know, the notorious commercials are louder than the show. And this allows you to see where that happens. So uh, that's what you use it for. Other than that, it's completely useless. All right, let's keep going. Mastering, well, let's put this also in the master, mastering, and we'll open this up. And you'll see that there are different types of, of mastering. And this is basically EQ and in compression and an exciter. So if we play that music back, And we try a different master, so that's make room for vocals, so you'll see a dip down in where the vocals would be. And then there's a warm concert hall, which is probably more useful for this. I'll turn it off. So that boosts the overall master. Uh, if we go back to subtle clarity, it's just boosting that a little bit. Turn it off. So that's just adding a bit of clarity in here, but you could turn up the uh, 
oral exciter from retro tape tube and, and crank that value up. There is a little bit of reverb that you can add or turn that off, a loudness maximizer. So I, I wouldn't say that this is the best mastering tool out there, but um, it's definitely good for an overall boost. And it makes sense to put it on the master track because everything is running through that, but you could put it on an individual clip. You could put it on a track or you could put on a clip and a track and on the master if you wanted to. Uh, swap channels is just doing that. It's going to swap channels. So if we go back over to our Joyce and Bill Hill, if we swap that, live in a century. Now it's over on the right hand side. The last one in the special category is the vocal enhancer. This is a good one. It's good because it sounds good and it's really, really simple. You pick either whether it's male or female or music, and I'll play this on. Our department can and will be responding from any moment in their daily lives. Turn it off. These firefighters live and work in Turn your community. On. And are willing at the sound of a beep or two to respond and help save lives. So it's. Pretty simple. You're just picking either male, female, or music. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of control. And it's a good, simple one to add in there without having to learn a whole bunch of other things. All right. So that's everything in the special side. The stereo imagery, we could actually use this on the, on the voice too. You could use this on music. You could use this on sound effects. But you can set whether this is wide, how wide the field is. So if we listen to this on the, the same Dialogue track. As you can see, flashing green lights come in a wide variety and can be mounted in or on many different types of vehicles. Whether Let's using a car, moving that. truck, or motorcycle, these dedicated men and women of your local fire department can and will be responding from any moment in their daily lives. It's got some interesting uses in there. All right, so that's the stereo expander. There's a pitch shifter. So let's go back to our dialogue track in here. Open up the pitch shifter. And we've got some choices like an angry gerbil. And can be mounted in or on many different types of or we've got the Dark Lord. <laughs> or let's go back to the default. And we can turn this down in two different ways, by cents or semitones. Cents are smaller values, and semitones are larger values. These dedicated men and women of your local fire department can and will be responding from any moment in their daily lives. These firefighters live and work in your community, and are willing at the sound of a beep or two to respond and help save lives. And I've got mine set on high precision here. I've got a pretty powerful computer, but uh, um, it's it's pretty, it's, it allows me to make those changes on the fly. I, I think just changing these values is really all you need to do. So that's in the uh, pitch shifter. And the rest of these are all obsolete. Some of these, the chorus, there's a new chorus, D-clicker. I showed you the clicker, the crackler, it's the D-clicker. I showed you all of these kinds of things. The reason that they're obsolete is the other versions I showed you are just so much better. Adobe keeps these old ones around in case you open an old project that you use these on. Other than that, don't use them. In the VST effects is where you would add more effects in here um, and they would show up. But those are the default effects inside Adobe Premiere Pro. So, whew, that's a lot that we went through, wasn't it? <laughs> I think, uh, but uh, by popular request, as I got uh, a lot of people asking after I did the visual effects one, which I'll give you a link to that one too. This is every single audio effect that's inside uh, Premiere Pro. Um, parametric EQ, dynamic, dynamics processing, uh, D Hummer, those are the kind of things that I would be using. A little bit of reverb and sweetening, but uh, you know, a lot of the other ones are, are redundant and I probably wouldn't use them. So, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this uh, useful, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do it very easily through PayPal, a one time or monthly contribution inside the uh, description of this uh, video or on the front page. We appreciate all the support that you give us out there, you wonderful PayPal supporting folks. 
Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen to your requests, create these giant tutorials for you when they're needed, and uh, make your st stuff sound really good.